All right, so we've just been joined in studio by Head of Sports here at TV3, Media General, uh, Michael OTAJ. Thank you, Michael, for your time and good to see you. Pleasure to be here. So I know you've been to Dubai, you've been monitoring the training uh, ahead of the match today. What are your expectations? Well, I would expect that the Black Stars will win. Um, I don't expect the biggest statement in terms of, uh, you know, I don't expect a performance that says we are potential African champions, but I'm expecting a good start. Remember, the start of tournaments has always been tricky. Mm. It's not just for the Black Stars, it's for a lot of teams. So if you look back in recent memory, um, I saw in the report mention of the periods when the team has been to the final. In the last two ones in 2010, the Black Stars lost the opening game. Mm. To Ivory Coast in 2015, the Black Stars lost the opening game uh, to Senegal. So um, the start of tournaments can be a bit tricky and complicated. But Benin is the sort of team you want to start again. And my feeling is that uh, like they did in 2017 when Ghana beat Uganda in the opening game, the Black Stars will find a way past Benin today. Uh, quite apart from the earlier challenges we had with who was going to be captain, who was going to be general captain, yeah. morale in camp seems to have been boosted. What's different about this national team? I don't think there's a lot different. You know, I think sometimes before the start of a tournament, the team, Chris Yapia has been talking about this is the most peaceful camp that he's seen. The players are, seem to be on the same page, but you never know. You never can test the depth of these things until they've gone out in a game and uh, players are rattled by the initial tackle, referee doesn't give, things don't work out well, then you begin to really see the character of a team. And I say this particularly about the Blasters because this is a team that's promised so much and delivered very little in the past. So I want to be able to put that within context. The only thing is that um, maybe the, the level of expectation is mm. not as strong as it was in the past. Mm. Um, also, when you look at the last two times the team has been to the final, it was almost the same thing. Mm. In 2015, after the 2014 World Cup, nobody really cared. Mm. And the team went all the way to the final. Mm. 2010, major players injured. We had shipped a lot of the players from under 20 to join up with the team. And when many people didn't expect the team to do what, the team went all the way. So maybe the only thing is that the level of expectation might work well in favor Michael, of the Michael, I'm going to talk about the level of expectation. I ask this question because... We've had very good players in the past. We've had the likes of Sula Muntari, Michael ACN. You know, the creme de la creme of African football. Today, we don't seem to have that, that level of, uh, you know, agility within the squad. I mean, who, who are you expecting, for instance, to shine out in this tournament? You know, for instance, we've heard about the potential starting lineup. It has mm. Thomas Partey, mm. very good season, start for Atletico Madrid. Mm. By mile, one of the top ten clubs in European football at the moment, and runners up in Spain, so he is a big deal. Koja Samoa is a big deal, regular at Inter Milan. Um, you also got in midfield today, Mubarak Wakaso, definitely going to start. He is a big name player, Christian Achu from Newcastle. It doesn't ring, it's not got the same ring of Montari, Apia, Essien to it, but these are players who've got reasonably good quality for us to expect them to do well. We'll look at expectations ahead of the match tonight, but we've also been finding out more uh, from people People on the streets uh, take a listen what they think about this Black Star team and expectations ahead of the match tonight. Ghanaian, I'm supporting the Black Stars to win this time around because it's been quite a long time since uh, we took a cup. Somewhere in 1982, we took our last cup. So I'm very sure uh, the Black Stars can bring the cup home. The coach actually I've been seeing and the way I've been following. The coach has actually been in the, a better position to put the players um, uh, on the forefront of uh, going to win this particular match. And I think most of the players, again, are committed enough to actually go in for this, call, for this African Cup of Nations. I would prefer Ghana to win as a Ghanaian, but looking at our team and then the preparation, um, I'm not sure. But uh, and I'm not doubt. I, I I I don't doubt if Egypt win, but I'll be surprised if Ghana win. Oh Ghana, though any easy my but see me here be a second and I'll be sir. Well, I think uh, the Black Stars has the chances of winning the African African Cup of Nations. Yes, looking at their history for the past 37 years, we have strived to be able to uh, take uh, get the cup, but. Uh, it hasn't been so for us, so I think that, as our captain said, as Samoajan, per the uh, interviews that we've had, they've had, yes, I, I think that there's more chances of them, like, taking the African Cup of Nations, since they themselves have said that there's much confidence of them taking it. All right, you heard voices from the street of Accra on what they make of tonight's match. Now, Michael, this is one of the rare moments that brings us together as Ghanaians. There's lots of joy, there's lots of unionism. 
Let's look at our team, for instance, our group I'm talking about. Now, we're playing Benin tonight. What, what do you expect? A very difficult game. They are is it? neighbors, mm -hmm. but also this is a Benin team who've played uh, nine Nations Cup games and have drawn, I think, only two. They've not won a game at this level. So as a proper big name team versus an underdog. But these games can be tricky. They have uh, Steve Mooney who plays in the English Premier League. You've got as well Stefan Cessigno, ex Sunderland, two good players. Amazing players. They can mm. also call on a good dose, a bit like a lot of the West Africa, French speaking West African mm. countries. Mm. A good dose of players who've had the benefit of good French football right. education and can call on them because of their background. Mm. But it's not a team that should strike fear in you. Uh, it's also not a team. Um, and it's because I hear people use this uh, explanation of we don't have big name players, neither does Benin. Mm. So I'm not sure. Sessignon is a, it's quite a big player. Yeah, but his Sessignon is not your party now. Right. You know, he's he's got a, he was he was up there and about, but no longer. So basically, the point I'm making is that in terms of player quality, there is enough within this Black Stars team to be able, I think, to cope mm. with what Benin has to offer. So, so you expect us to sail through without any difficulties at all? Benin. Guinea-Bissau, if we don't get out of this group, we have no business playing in the ah, nation's Ah, thank you very much, Michael TJ, uh, Group Head of Sports here at Media General. Thank you for helping us with some analysis ahead of today's match.